Good afternoon, good afternoon. I'm delighted to greet you in the matchless and powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank God for this Wednesday. Wednesday is sometimes called hump day. My goodness, how fast the time is passing. Today is, let me just see, um, today's date is September the 23rd, September the 23rd. Um, so this month is moving quickly. Um, just a couple of announcements very quickly. Um, first of all, I want to invite you to join us for our Bible study on this Wednesday. Bible study will be at 7 o'clock, and so we are talking about love. So please join us for our Bible study tonight. Good to see you, Sister Beverly Ward, Valerie Ellis. Good to see you. Good to see everyone. Please come on. Um, so that's the first thing I wanted to say to you. The other thing is that you can see what's happening in Washington. We certainly um, pray and we join the family of Justice Ruth Ginsburg, who made sweeping changes because she was a warrior for justice, not just for women, but for all of God's people. And we certainly um, thank God for her gift, her life, and her legacy. And what a giant oak that has fallen, even though she was small in stature, but big in every other way. And so this is definitely going to shift the, shift the balance on the Supreme Court. You can see where the president is trying right now to ram through um, another justice. And they have the votes to do it. I was, I was disappointed with some of the senators. And I, I really don't trust um, Senator Collins. And I was disappointed with um, Senator um, Romney, who I thought would probably vote to wait until after the election. But of course, he's a conservative person and he will vote his values. And so that means that for the most part, the Senate will have the votes that they need to get done whatever they need to get done, even the confirmation. And that will shift things enormously. Um, we can only pray and hope for a miracle in that regard. So we got to definitely make sure that we vote because this nation, as we know it, is shifting radically before for our very eyes. We must encourage our young people. If you're between 18 and 35, you need to vote. That's the constituency that they have not yet counted and don't necessarily expect to, in fact, vote. So I can't stress that enough. Early voting um, starts on October the 24th. I plan to vote early. You can go to voteearly.org. Voteearly.org. I'm going to have Kimberly put it on our website and see if we can also get it on our Facebook page as well um, so that you'll know exactly what to do. It'll show you what you need to do to vote early, what you need to do to get a mail-in ballot, and what you need to do to vote on the day of the election. But we have to be informed. We have to be informed. You know, I'm part of the clergy council for the 70 Precinct, 70 Precinct Interfaith Council. I'm actually the first vice president. And I can tell you that our other brothers and sisters, our Jewish brothers, Pakistani brothers, um, they hold together cohesively, um, and that's why politicians pander to those groups, because they are cohesive and they look to get their, um, their vote. But they also make demands on what they want from their politicians. Well, let me not ramble too long. The other thing I want to say is that Women's Day is October the 11th. Women's Day is October the 11th, and I want you to know that the men are working hard to prepare or uh, to go meal for our women on Women's Day. We'll discuss with you those particulars, but they are working on a wonderful meal for you. You'll pick it up outside and you'll keep it moving. They will have where you can pre-order because we still have to do things that we need to do to raise funds so that we can keep this ministry going. I want to thank those of you who support this ministry continuously. Thank you for your prayers and thank you for your financial support. If you're one of those persons that watches us virtually and you want to sow a seed in some rich soil, we hope that you will consider us. I consider the fact that we have really three churches. We have the church that gathers, we have the church that's scattered, and we have our virtual church. So those of you who tune in unto us on a consistent basis. I want you to know that I consider you family, so you are part of the Salem family. Out of one blood have God created all of us to dwell together in unity. Okay, let me get to the word. I tell you, I am always just so amazed that God's word is just so rich. The grass withered and the flower faith, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Um, my devotional today comes out of Paul's letter 
um, to the church at Ephesus, the church at Ephesus, Ephesians chapter one, Ephesians chapter one. And I was meditating and asking God, okay, God, where do you want me to go? What do you want me to share with the people? And, and God um, dropped this into my spirit that we need to ask God to give us new eyes, ask God to give us new eyes so that we might be able to see. Yesterday, we talked about being a water walker for Jesus. Don't be afraid to get out of the boat and at Jesus' word, and he says, come, then God will allow us to do the impossible. Today, we want to talk about um, asking God for new eyes. When Paul writes to the church at Ephesus, he's not discussing doctrinal issues. He's not discussing um, issues and problems with the church. Like at Corinth, he talks about being unified in the church, and also there was all kinds of sinful behavior that was going on and people were offering sacrifices to pagan gods. And so Paul deals with a lot of doctrinal issues. But in this letter um, to the church at Ephesus, Paul just wants people to understand the, the, the love of God and the eternal purpose of God and God's grace and what God has done to empower us um, not only to be saved for our own purposes, but also for the glory of God. And so Paul opens, and I'm in Ephesians chapter 1, we're missing with verse 1. Paul writes, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He opens, praise be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realm with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight and love. He predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. What is Paul saying there? He's saying that God chose us before we even knew him. God chose us before the foundation of the world. God preordained that we would be joint heirs with his son, Jesus Christ. God already gave us our, our inheritance before we even knew him. He predestined, predetermined what he wanted for us. So I don't care who you are or what you're going through. I want you to know that God has already blessed you and given you a gift. And that if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you are a son of God and you are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. He says in him, we have redemption through his blood. God redeemed us from our sin, and the price that he paid was the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sin in accordance to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. And he goes on to say that when you believe, you were marked in him with a seal, the promise of the Holy Spirit, which guides us it is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance and to the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. In other words, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, then God guarantees our well-being by depositing in us the Holy Spirit that guides and directs us. And so we have to praise God for God has already blessed us and has already given us his inheritance. This brings me to the point that I want to park for just the next few minutes. He says, for this reason, Paul says, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I've not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Paul is saying, and I'm saying by extension, not only to you, but to me, that I want to continue to pray for you. I want you to continue to pray for me that God will give us wisdom. We talked about what wisdom is in Bible study. We spent the whole month on that. But wisdom is the ability to apply the knowledge that God has given us in a way that is in accordance with the will of God. 
You can have knowledge, but not know how to apply it in a way that pleases and honors God. And then he says that I also pray that God will give you revelation so that you may know him better. This is my pivotal verse, and I'm done for today. He says, I pray, and this is my prayer for us, that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. In other words, not that your eyes might be open so that you can see things and material things and where you're going and certain directions. That's not what he's talking. He's not talking about that kind of eyesight. But he's saying that the eyes of your heart might be open, that you might know the will and the love and the power of God. When your heart is right, then you're able to make right decisions. Some people make not decisions that align with the will of God because their heart is not right. And so you want your heart to be right so that God can show you things and open up your eyes through a clear and clean heart. And he says that you may be aware of the glorious inheritance that you have as God's people, and here it is, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. The power, watch this now, as my friend J.G. McCann would say, watch this, watch this, watch this. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly realms far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in this present, present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be the head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. In other words, what Paul is saying is that not only does he want us to have wisdom and revelation and ask God for new eyes that we might know him better, but also understand that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead also dwells in us. Therefore, as Paul writes to the church at Philippi, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So let's ask God not just to give us vision, which is the ability to see and to drive. And I just went to get new glasses and I've had some challenges with my eyes. I'm so glad for those of you who prayed for me. I had a sty and I had this one here still a little bit red. And so that's just vision to be able to see where you're going. But what we want is not just vision, but we want insight so that we can be perceptive and have discernment to know the will of God. Well, God bless you and God keep you is my prayer. Thank you so much for this time together. Let's go to God in prayer. And when you pray, not only do we want to be water walkers, but we want to ask God to give us new eyes so that we can see with the heart of Christ. Dear God, for this time together, we give you thanks and for your word that's so pregnant with truth and power that it gives birth as we yet try to understand it. We give you thanks. Thank you for these persons who thought it not robbery to spend this time with us as we seek to have devotion and prayer and be in relationship with you. We praise you, we honor you, and we give you glory. Thank you for how you kept us. Thank you for how you brought us. Thank you that you never left us. And now we continue to pray for your church. We pray for your people. We pray for the family of Justice Ginsburg as they lay the rest this wonderful woman who is a warrior for peace and justice because we know that out of one blood you created all of us to dwell together in unity. We continuously pray for this nation, O oh God, because we know that you in your own time are going to make the crooked places straight and the rough places plain and your glory will be revealed. Help us not to get weary in well-doing. We thank you now. We praise you. We honor you and give you glory. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let me get, well, I've been working all morning, but let me get back to the administrative duties of the church. 
I look to see you on Sunday. Sunday is homecoming, so please come home. We will also celebrate the Holy Communion. We will still try to get you out as early as possible. We're going to try to move expeditiously, um, but um, if you can, if you can't, we will meet you virtually. But wherever you are, know that God is with you. God is for you. God is in you. And where God is, there can be no failure. Let's receive the benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance, grant you his peace and his love. And you're going in and you're going out. You're down sitting and you're uprising till we shall stand in his presence through Jesus the Christ, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. God bless you, and I'll see you tonight at 7 o'clock.